So now let's see how we're going to solve the problem that we have for our division game. I want to generate randomly numbers that, when divided, result in integers, or whole numbers. So I'm going to outsource this algorithm to a different method. And this method is going to return two numbers instead of just one. There are a few different ways of achieving this, but we're going to use arrays. In very simple terms, arrays are collections of data. So it's a sequence of individual data elements that can be accessed through a single variable name. And these elements of data need to be of the same type. So let's see how it works in practice. Let's create a new method called getDivisionNumbers. And this method is going to return an array of integers, as we can see in the signature. So when you see a data type followed by square brackets, that's an array. So we want this method to return specifically an array of integers. Before we return this array, we're creating a new random object, since we want these numbers to be generated randomly. And then we're declaring this array by using new int with a number inside the square bracket. And this number is the size of the array. It's the number of elements that this array will contain. And since we need to return two numbers, we're creating an array of size two. I can also initialize an array by explicitly declaring the elements that will be inside of it. And you can see an example in the documentation. And we can see here that at the moment we have an error on the method's name. And that's because whenever a method has a return type, it needs to return something. It's something that the compiler demands. So let's return the result array of integers that I just created. The next step will be to create the random numbers. And I think it makes more sense to have our highest number as 99. Otherwise, it would be a very easy game. We don't want divisions that only involve numbers up to 9. And now we need to see how we insert those numbers in the array. And again, there's not just one way of doing it, but let's go with the most straightforward one. This code, result square brackets 0 equals first number, means that the first element of the array is the first number variable. And that's because arrays use a zero-based index, which is very common in computer programming. Very often, collections are started with an index of zero. And of course, that means that the second element will have the index of one. So let's assign the second number to the second element of the array. Now, just for the sake of curiosity, let's print the array. Let's see what happens when we do console.write line the result. Of course, we need to call the get division numbers method in the division game for that. So I'm putting a breakpoint on line 55 so we can use the debugger. And once we step into the code, line by line, we get into the line that we want. And if we hover over the result, we can see the signature of the array, int with the size of two. And we can also see an arrow on the left side of the result. And that means that you can expand this line which means the array contains elements. And in our case, the elements are 90 and 6. So we can see here the power of the debugger to help us understand what's going on in our code. Now let's see in the program what's going to be written. So we have this weird line, system.int32. And that's because in C Sharp, when you print a collection, you are actually printing the name of the collection only. To be able to print the elements of the collection, we need to learn another type of loop. And we're going to do that in the next chapter. And don't forget to read through the documentation in the link below so you can fully understand arrays and practice with the exercises for Microsoft.